Mojo's introduction on May the 2nd, 2023 shook the Python world to its core. For the unfamiliar, Mojo is a compiled programming language designed by AI company Modular to extend Python with systems programming functionality. The keynote that introduced Mojo showed off a demo where Mojo was 35,000 times faster than Python for calculating the Mandelbrot set. Modular made some bold claims about how Mojo is able to work with existing Python code. So are we going to see an industry shift away from Python and C++ towards Mojo? Mojo is still closed source, but I was given access to the Mojo Playground, so let's have a look at some benchmarks I wrote, and then I'll discuss my first impressions of the language after using it for a few hours. Let's get our Mojo on. I think it's important to start by discussing how we convert between Python and Mojo code. A lot of Python code can be dropped directly into the Mojo compiler and will just work. However, if you do this, Mojo gives everything the Python object class and can't take full advantage of its type system. So the first thing to do is use Mojo type annotations to allow the compiler to optimize our function. Mojo has similar types to Python, but the types are always capitalized. So to change this Python on screen to a Mojo function, we just replace our int type hints. This will use the Mojo integer type, which is much lighter weight and faster than Python's own. Mojo also has two types of functions, functions like Python and more optimized fn functions. fn functions require that variables are explicitly marked as constant or mutable. So we have to add the var or let keywords to our variable declarations. Var makes the variable mutable while let creates a constant. And that's it. This Python function has now become a compiler optimizable mojo function with very little work. Let's take a look at some benchmarks. Please be aware that these are all micro benchmarks and probably don't reflect real world performance. I mostly wrote them to see what mojo is and isn't good at. Also, the Python version available in this notebook is 3.8, so it'll be missing a lot of the runtime optimizations introduced in the newest versions. Most of these benchmarks follow the same structure. The first cell is usually the Python implementation. We define our values and our function before timing that function over a large number of iterations and taking the mean. The Mojo implementation is similar, except we've gone through the steps I just mentioned for converting to a Mojo function. We also use the now function from Mojo's time package to get the current time in nanoseconds. Finally, we get the ratio between the Python time per iteration and the Mojo time per iteration to show the speed up. You'll notice that variables between the Python and Mojo versions are named differently. This is to prevent Mojo picking up the Python variables defined in the previous cell and using Python objects as we discussed earlier, so we get the maximum speed. This first test is concatenation of of two strings, each one character long. I'm having to use the mojo string type from the string package here because the built-in string is a string literal, which doesn't support some of the features we need. I've run this test a few times and mojo has yet to come out ahead of Python. In fact, it runs at less than 25% of the speed that Python does. I actually had to reduce the number of test iterations down from 1 million because the Mojo implementation was crashing the Mojo kernel. Python was absolutely fine though, even with that really long string. Secondly, we have an addition test. We're adding two numbers and then reassigning the value to the first number, so our numbers should constantly grow. Mojo uses a completely different underlying implementation for integers, and that means it should really shine here. And to nobody's surprise, it is faster. In fact, it's around 200 times faster. Pretty good going so far. If we do the same thing with division, we see that Mojo is, again, significantly faster than Python. Surprisingly though, it's not as fast as it was with addition. I suspect this has something to do with the underlying float representation being a lot more similar to Python's own. The next benchmark is the first one I had some real trouble writing. It's a worst case array search. We create a list containing the numbers from one to one million, and we're benchmarking the time it takes to get the index of the number one million from the list. In Python, this is a fair standard operation. We can just use the dot index method on the list class. However, in Mojo, this was more of a struggle to implement. You see, a list literal in Mojo doesn't create an instance of a list. It creates an instance of Mojo's built-in list literal class. Unlike Python lists, list literals are immutable, so you can't append elements to them. They also don't implement dunder iter, so you can't use a for in loop to search through them. Mojo has a list package in its standard library, but this doesn't contain any Python-like lists either. The closest I could find was the dynamic vector from the vector package. However, like list literal, this doesn't currently implement dunder iter, so I'm not sure how much of a replacement it actually is. This change to list literal seems like a deliberate design choice and would break a lot of Python code, which would mean that Mojo isn't a true superset of Python. Mojo's still in development though, and there are mentions of a canonical list in the roadmap, so this all might change in the future. Regardless, I eventually managed to get the benchmark running, and the Mojo implementation was much faster. There might be some compiler optimization going on here around competitive code, but 
third, I'm not totally sure. It's a shame about the lack of interrupt between Mojo and Python lists though, or this would be a massive win for Mojo, given the speed up we're seeing. Final benchmark I have is everyone's favorite Fibonacci sequence. I'm only doing one iteration of each here, because this incredibly naive algorithm can take a while to execute, but the long and short of it is that Mojo's advantage increases the larger you make n. At smaller Fib numbers, like the fifth, Mojo is barely faster than Python. However, when you hit the 30th Fibonacci number and higher, Mojo is closer to 100 times faster than Python. Not bad overall. So let's answer the big question. Will Mojo actually replace Python? Probably not, at least in its current state. Mojo's documentation has a page called Roadmap and Sharp Edges that goes over some of the differences between Mojo and Python at the moment, such as the lack of list comprehensions, keyword arguments in functions, dictionaries, etc. They're looking to implement what they call canonical arrays, which I think may make the Mojo list literal closer to a Python list, which would be great. A lot of the other problems are mentioned on the aforementioned pane, so hopefully they'll be able to bring Mojo in line with Python by the time they release it to the public and make it open source. Hopefully they'll also improve the documentation, because that's something I had a little bit of trouble with. It's a bit sparse and not very well laid out. One big thing I noticed was a lack of Python's built-in functions, like sum and max, and that doesn't seem to be anywhere on the sharp edges list or roadmap, so I'm not totally sure what's going on there. If they can truly bring Mojo in line with Python and make it so that you can just drop in your favorite Python code, then maybe it'll work. There's a long way to go before that though. Mojo doesn't have a package manager yet, so you can't actually use your favorite Python library. So in conclusion, we could see the rise of Mojo once it's a bit more feature complete, but it's also going to be very difficult to topple Python and its thriving ecosystem. Once Mojo is released or the playground gives us terminal access, I'd like to do a video comparing Mojo to writing Python extensions in Rust, so be sure to subscribe for that. And if you're interested in high performance computing, why not check out this video where I actually explain how to write your first Rust Python extension.